The march of the machine has commenced. The Phyrexians are ready to conquer the entire multiverse. Commanding the charge is Elish Norn, the leader of the Praetors. Look how she radiates in all her metallic glory. Elish Norn follows the doctrine written in the Argent etchings, and she will carry its message to every plane she invades. Those who resist her ascension, like the traitor Urobrask, will be repurposed to serve her machine orthodoxy. Nothing will stand in the way of her conquest. The Mother of Machines has a flair for the luxurious. Her collection of completed artifacts already flaunts a sky shark and a dread ship. Now she's setting her sights on bigger game. On Ixalan, she seeks the elder dinosaur Itali. In the Primal Conqueror, she sees the image of herself. All that's left is to make this predator a little more perfect. Much better. On Theros, another world-eating beast has caught the attention of the Praetors. Freed from the underworld, Pelucranos has been reborn. Completing this hungry Hydra will give the Phyrexians a monstrous upper hand in overthrowing the multiverse. In his new form, he will match the Mother of Machines. The shell of porcelain white and scarlet will serve as a trademark of her growing dominion. While Elish Norn is prowling for new prey, her minions are holding down the fort on Phyrexia. Glissa is staying busy by incubating new invaders. These parasites will follow in the footsteps of their matriarch. Meanwhile, Nyssa, now fully complete, must confront a paragon of her past. The sight of her new form will shift the ground beneath Chandra's feet. As Elish Norn's armies lay waste to these worlds, the Phyrexians will continue to claim more trophies. Nothing is safe from their contagious grasp. Storm clouds are settling in across the open skies. The earth is separating under the influence of an evil force. Cracks in the soil are taking the shape of a sinister symbol. Hovering portals are the precursors to their arrival. The Phyrexians are everywhere. In order to travel across the multiverse, they've activated their greatest weapon, Realm Breaker, the Invasion Tree. Through its sprawling branches, they send their mechanical legions to convert all planes. From Kamigawa to Ikoria, the contagion proliferates. On Ravnica, Realm Breaker's metal limbs erupt from the center square. But standing their ground are constructs who have sworn to defend the Guild Pact. They will hold the first line of resistance. Similar scenes of horror and chaos are unfolding everywhere. On Kaladesh, watchers of the Surgical Bay skitter in pursuit of flywheel racers as they zip through the city streets. Converted vampires tangle with the natives of Olgrotha beneath the haunting light of a full moon. Completed dragons rip through the skies of Tarkir as their lightning breath echoes in a thunderous quake. On Fiora, assassins and city guards clash with corrupted soldiers. This siege threatens the lives of everyone on the plane. But their queen, Marquesa, refuses all who trespass. Nobody threatens her throne. As Elish Norn's forces spread, the battle rages on. The foundries of New Capenna are bellowing. The mage rings of Viren are overloading. Realm Breaker's gnarled branches are puncturing the surface of every plane. The stakes have never been higher, and everyone is rising to the defense of their home. But whose home will survive the invasion, and whose home won't? Phyrexia is taking the fight to just about every world we've ever been to. Recent hotspots, fan favorites. Elish Norn is coming for them all. If the Phyrexians aren't at your doorstep yet, they will be soon. Prepare for battle. 
Introducing Battles, a brand new card type in March of the Machine, representing Phyrexia's invasion of the multiverse, and everyone else playing a little defense. Here's Invasion of Ikoria. Each battle is a transforming double-faced card. A battle enters the battlefield front face up, with a number of defense counters on it. That's how much damage it takes to defeat it. Let's break it all down. Battles can be attacked, but you're not playing battles to defend them. You want to take them out. As a battle enters the battlefield, you choose an opponent to be its protector. A battle's protector can block creatures that are attacking that battle. Every other player, including the battle's controller, can attack it. Battles can be damaged. I mean, why attack battles if you can't damage them, right? Damage dealt to a battle causes that many defense counters to be removed from it. But it's not only combat damage. Some spells will specifically say that they damage battles. Also, any spell or ability that says any target, such as Stoke the Flames, can target a battle. Excellent work! That leads us to battles can be defeated. At least you hope so. Once a battle has no defense counters on it, an ability triggers that exiles it, and then you cast the back face without paying its mana cost. And there won't be a mana cost, so that part should be easy to remember. The back faces of battles include key parts of each plane's defense strategy. Sure, smash everything. That's, um, strategy, yeah. And that's how the battle lines have been drawn in March of the Machine. Small rewards lead to big rewards, if you're prepared to fight for them. The forces of Elish Norn are overrunning the multiverse. The mark of the Phyrexians is forming across all its lands. But fear not, for there is hope on the horizon. These planes are the homes of heroes, and they are teaming up far and wide to protect them. Incoming, Borborygmus and Fibblethip. Standing at a staggering 10 stories and eight inches tall, and bearing binocular vision between the both of them, these two Ravnikans will rip through the machine orthodoxy faster than a rhino raid through the rubble belt. If need be, for one and a blue, they can get lost in the rubble too. And speaking of rubble, no one knows their way around some ruins better than the Lawhold. Quintorius Cand is joining the fight against the Phyrexians on his native plane of Arcavios. This Loxodon will lean into his archaeological research to awaken the spirits of heroes past. He believes the scroll is mightier than the sword. But maybe not this sword. Surveil and flashback enthusiasts unite. This is just the weapon to brandish against any unwanted invaders, of which there are plenty. From the guardians of Kaladesh to the raptors of Ixalan, our heroes are armed to the razor teeth in defense. Perhaps no better bearer of a pair of blades is Boonbringer Valkyrie. The angels of Starnheim are entering combat once more, and this warrior will provide the teamwork that makes the dream work. Calling on her for backup allows her to share her abilities with an ally. Such tactics will be the key to keeping the skies of Kaldheim clear. Battling alongside a buddy is one thing, but how about summoning an entire continent for support? The Zalfarins have been released from their time rift and they're returning the fight back to Phyrexia. Leading the invasion is none other than Teferi Akosa of Zalfir. This order of justice and retribution has been a long time coming. Heroes across the multiverse are rallying together to push back against the Phyrexians. Colossal dinosaurs and virtuous gods are gathering to defend the hearth. Even the Sengir are weaving their way into the fray. Grandmother Ravi is simply reveling in the occasion. The world tree is on fire. The battle for the multiverse has begun. The war is felt heaviest in the hearts of its heroes, and they all have a score to settle with the Phyrexians. As this epic story reaches its apex, familiar faces will prove pivotal to Elish Norn's downfall. Among them is Ren, the Dryad, who will exert her influence on the very core that powers the marching machine. 
sealed from existence, showcases the potency of her elemental magic and the intensity of her resolve. Nothing will endure the wrath of her roots. Bonding with the invasion tree will give Ren unprecedented power. She will use it to stretch her hands across the blind eternities and reach for Teferi. Through this connection, a timely message will travel to the Temporal Pilgrim. With her last strength, she will defy the impossible by phasing all of Zalfir back into existence. On Phyrexia, at the center of the Maelstrom, another hero faces an impossible dilemma. Hanging in the balance between life and unlife, Ajani awaits in suspense for intervention. The cure to his condition lives in the heart of Malira, the Mirren outcast. With her selfless sacrifice, he will finally be freed from the grasp of Phyresis. This war may affect no hero more than Karn, who was partially responsible for its beginning. Burdened by the regret of losing his home plane of Mirrodin to the Phyrexians ages ago, he returns to Machine Hell with one singular purpose, to destroy its mother. Aiding in the task is the angel Elspeth, who will glide into battle on wings shining like a sixth sun. The light of Elspeth's sword will pierce through Elishnorn as the forces of virtue and malevolence collide. Then, in a spectacular finale, Karn will set right the mistakes of his past by assuring that Elishnorn never returns to harm another. With her dissolution, the march of the machine will come to its conclusion. And that wraps things up for our debut. This set will be invading stores for pre-releases on April 14th, on Arena and Magic Online April 18th, and available everywhere on April 21st. But the story doesn't end there. Be sure to catch the aftermath online by reading the epilogue on May 1st and 2nd. Learn more about those cards on May 2nd, play them on Arena and Magic Online May 11th, and they will be available everywhere on May 12th. Now is the time to prepare for your one last stand.